after personally having had well over 15 credit cards from Chase in the decade that I've been on my credit card journey. I can completely understand how daunting it might seem when you're on square one, starting with one of the most valuable banks in the entire industry. JP Morgan Chase. And so in today's video, I'm going to show you how to climb the Chase credit card ladder, starting from zero and climbing all the way up to potentially that $10 million Chase credit card. And if you're new here, hi, I'm John of John's Finance Tips. And this is a channel I dedicate to talking about all things money. In today's video, we're talking about how you can get all of Chase's most valuable cards simply by climbing their credit card ladder. Let's get into it. Since Chase issues some of the most valuable credit cards in the entire game, they have some rules. So let's establish these ground rules. For one, with Chase, they have one of the most infamous rules known as 524. What that simply means is if you have opened five credit cards in the past 24 months, ineligible for another card. So keep that in mind. Rule number two, it's called two in 30. If you have gotten approved for two credit cards from Chase in the past 30 days, you're good to go. However, if you apply for a third card within that rolling 30 days, you'll automatically get denied. Rule number three, velocity. When you start applying for credit cards from Chase, you wanna be careful how quickly you apply for cards. If you apply for too many cards too quick, they'll shut you down. Basically, they think you might be committing fraud. Rule number four, your credit to income ratio cannot be greater than 50%. What this means is if you make $100,000, Chase is gonna give you an overall credit limit of no more than $50,000, which is 50% of your income. So sometimes if you're applying for credit cards that have a minimum credit limit of say five or 10,000 and you're already at that 50% mark, you might have to actually call Chase to reduce some of your credit limits or make more money. With the Chase credit card ladder, we have five rungs or five tiers. And the structure of the video is gonna break down as such. For every single tier, I'm gonna talk about the recommended credit score. Then we'll talk about the objectives within that tier. These are the things that you're gonna to wanna to be able to learn and master before you move on. Next, we'll talk about how long you should expect to be in a particular tier. And finally, we'll talk about some of the credit cards I recommend within each particular tier. And if you'd like to support my channel in any way, you can feel free to check out any of my top card offers or sponsor links down below as well. Tier one, or what I would call the base tier with Chase. The credit score requirement here is actually non-existent, meaning if you have a limited or no credit profile, you would fit perfectly at this level. The objectives of this level because it's for somebody who has limited to no credit history, it's very basic. The objective really is to learn how to use a credit card. It's understanding that the most important thing that you have to do with a credit card is pay on time and pay it in full. It's understanding things like the differences between a statement closing date as well as your due date. By the way, here's a pro tip. Paying 90 to 98% of most of your bill off before the closing date instead of the due date, is actually gonna give you a slight boost to your credit score. And overall, you kind of see somebody here is learning the foundational elements of a credit card. Because once we get to the upper tiers, there's gonna be more bells and whistles, and that's gonna get confusing if you don't have a handle on how to manage your credit effectively. And speaking of the upper tiers, you're probably wondering how long you have to stay here. My timeline recommendation and where I've seen success is spending about 12 months or so here. In the 12 months, it should be enough time for you to learn the basics and actually see a slight increase in your credit limit, and so you're responsible for a little bit more. However, you don't have to spend 12 months if you understand understand quickly, you learn quickly, you can move up quickly. Card recommendations. Chase really only has one card at this level and that is called the Chase Freedom Rise. This area is actually pretty unique in that it is aimed at someone with no to limited credit, but it actually offers pretty decent cashback earnings at 1.5%. In addition, if you set up auto pay within three months of opening the Freedom Rise, you're just gonna get a $25 statement credit, which is really consumer centric because you're getting rewarded for activity you should already be doing. And the one thing to note is if you are having difficulty getting approved for the Freedom Rise, Chase actually says it would help if you had $250 in some sort of checking account with them. Tier two, or what I would call the entry level tier with Chase. The credit score requirement typically hovers around 670, which would be in that good to excellent range. The objective at this level, if tier one was Chase Credit 101, tier two would be Chase Credit 201. Here, we're gonna introduce some more bells and whistles. The first thing to note is you're gonna get cashback earnings that are gonna be greater than 1x, 1.5x. You could be looking things at 3x. You could be looking things at 5x. And so now what you wanna really start thinking about is how are you optimizing your spend? Basically, where are you spending the most money every single month? Gas, grocery, online shopping. 
Now, are you using the right card for each individual category? I know some people are like, you know what, I just want a catch-all card, which is fine. But a lot of us, if we're thinking about climbing the credit card ladder, we want to optimize for how we're spending. So do you have a good way of tracking where your spend is and what card is optimized for the particular spend? And at this level, all of your earnings are going to be in the form of Chase Ultimate Reward Points, which you can redeem for cash back. And the type of person that I typically see here is maybe you're a handful of years out of college, you're getting your second or third card now, and really you're thinking, okay, I wanna make sure that I'm being smart and effective. As far as time that you wanna spend here, it's typically gonna be six to 12 months is where I see people are getting comfortable understanding, hey, I'm gonna be going and eating out. Great, I need this card for 3%. Hey, I'm gonna be shopping online. I need this card for 5%. Because there is gonna be a little bit of balance, right, as you get into it. In addition, at this level, you're gonna see things like sign-on bonuses. So typical sign-on bonuses could be something like a $200 cash back after you spend $500 in the first three months. So now you're starting to think about, okay, how do I not just layer on the cash back savings, but how can I optimize my spend if I know I'm gonna spend $500 in three months? Ah, get a sign-on bonus. So really understanding the interplay of sign-on bonus plus cash back. As always though, if you're a quick learner and you're mastering it, move on quicker than six to 12 months. There's no issue there. And here are three cards that I would recommend at this level. The first one is one of my favorite beginner cards from Chase, and that is gonna be the Chase Freedom Unlimited. As of right now, the filming of this video, this card has one of the best sign-up bonuses I've seen for a beginner card, where you're gonna get unlimited cash back match for the first year. What that means is the card right now will earn 5X on booking travel through Chase Ultimate Reward Travel Portal, 3X for dining, 1.5X everywhere. With an elevated sign-up bonus, you're gonna effectively be able to get 10X for booking travel through the Chase Ultimate Reward Travel Portal, 6X for dining, 3X for all other purchases. Folks, this offer from Chase, this 3X Everywhere Unlimited for year one, is the best offer, not just from Chase, but across any entry-level beginner card that I've ever seen. The annoying thing is, it's not publicly available, but if you want, I do actually have a link for that offer down below. Feel free to check it out. The one thing to note is all the cashback match comes in at the end of the year. So during the year, you're gonna earn regular, and then at the end of the year, they're gonna dump in all of your unlimited cashback match. The second card I recommend here is actually the Chase Amazon Prime card. If you shop on Amazon, you need to jump on this card. Right now, it's offering a $100 Amazon gift card as a sign-up bonus. You don't have to do anything, just sign up for the card, and you'll get 5% cash back on Amazon and Whole Foods. Of course, there's no annual fee. My recommendation for this card is jump on it. The catch is you need an Amazon Prime account, but in today's day and age, who doesn't have an Amazon Prime account? And the third card I recommend, or I guess three and four, are the Chase Inc. Unlimited and the Chase Inc. Cash Business Cards. Now, you're probably thinking, I don't have a business. That's fine. You don't need to have a formal LLC or corporation. If you're a sole prop with some sort of side hustle, you can apply for business cards. And business cards help with your 524 case. Why? Because business cards don't show up on a personal credit report. If you open five business cards in the past 24 months, it doesn't actually count against your 524 because 524 only scans your personal credit report, whereas business cards go to a business credit report. And as far as qualifying for a business card, you can use projected income, and it could be for something as simple as selling items online, Craigslist, Facebook, eBay. Really, anything that you have done with the intent of generating profit slash revenue would qualify you for a business, apply as a sole prop. You don't need a separate tax ID number. You can just use your social and you're good to go. I applied for my first and got approved for my first business card with $3,000 of projected revenue. So back to the Inc. cards, the Inc. Unlimited and the Inc. Cash right now also have incredible sign-up bonuses, $900 back after spending $6,000. However, the $900 comes in the form of 90,000 Chase Ultimate Reward Points incredible value, and of course, no annual fee on either card. Tier three, or what I would call the mid-tier level with Chase, credit score. At this level, I'm seeing somewhere in the neighborhood of about 690, which is still in that good to excellent range. The objectives of this level before moving on to the next tier. So here is really where we're gonna start piecing things together. At the 101 level, it was foundations. At the 201 level, it was cashback. At the 301 level is the real potatoes and tomatoes of the whole thing, and that is taking the Chase Ultimate Reward Points that you have been earning and now redeeming them for free flights and free hotels. The reason that this is really advanced is because there are really a limitless number of combinations that you can take your points in moving them somewhere to get free travel. Some are more optimal than others, and it's now on you to figure out 
how you like to travel, where you want to travel to, who you're bringing along, and how many points you're going to require. In addition to just chase ultimate reward points, you can be earning points specifically for one type of airline or one type of hotel program here. Things like Air Canada, things like Hyatt. And not to mention, we now are layering on annual fees. Yes, I know, the dreaded annual fee that you have to pay for a credit card. So many people are so opposed to it, but my whole thing is, if the card is giving you more value than the annual fee, then it absolutely makes sense. But again, at the 101 and 201 level, everything was 100% free. There was no annual fee. But at this level, you will have to pay to unlock more value. The amount of time somebody would have spent at this level is going to range anywhere from three to six months. This is pretty quick. However, However, I would say if you are here, you really are learning because in the credit card points and miles game, if you want to do kind of the razzle dazzle, fly in business class for less than $100, stay at an all inclusive resort for free, you're going to need a lot of points. And when it comes to accumulating points, the more points you can get, the sooner you can get them, the higher likelihood of you being able to do the trip that you want to do. So the three to six month window is really kind of thinking about the person who's at this level now, applying for cards, applying for cards, applying for cards. And as you're applying and as you're learning how to use it, you're just gonna skill up a lot faster than at the first two levels. Of course, if three to six months feels way too fast for you, that's fine. Take your time and really learn how to use the cards effectively here. At the same time, if three to six months feels too slow, Hey, by all means, get the cards, get the cards, get the cards, and move on to the next tier. Here are a couple cards that I recommend at this level. The first is gonna be the Chase Sapphire Preferred. This credit card is the first card you're getting from Chase that allows you to take the Chase Ultimate Reward Points that you've been earning, let's say, from your freedoms, and moving them to one of their hotel or airline transfer partners. And in the points and miles game, this is where all the value is locked up. But as soon as you can transfer it, you are now unlocking it, and it is going to completely change your perception of what credit cards can do for you. For example, Chase has one of the most valuable hotel transfer partners in the game, Hyatt. I stayed at the Secrets Moshe down in Mexico last year. That property, easily $750 to $1,000 a night. I spent less than about 25 or 28,000 points per night. How do I get the points? I can one, stay at Hyatt. I can two, get a Hyatt dedicated credit card, which is also from Chase. Or I can take points that I earned from my Chase Sapphire Preferred and transfer them to Hyatt. And Chase Sapphire Preferred has a standard sign-up bonus of 60,000 points after 3K spent. An elevated sign-up bonus might be 80 or 90,000 points after 3K spent. And so you can see, you earn the points, transfer them to Hyatt, make the booking. The Chase Sapphire Preferred does have an annual fee of $95, but the card gives you a $50 hotel credit each year. So effectively, it's a $45 a year card. Another card I recommend at this level is the Chase World of Hyatt credit card. This card right now has a sign-up bonus of 60,000 points after you do kind of all the qualifying purchases. It used to give two or three free nights, but even still, I highly value Hyatt points. I would certainly look at this card. And at this level, you're also starting to see that, hey, this card is only gonna earn me Hyatt points, which is true. And that's why I was saying, you really need to master how you want to use points and miles. Because with Chase Ultimate Reward points, you have flexibility. You can transfer them to their airline and hotel partners. But if you're just gonna get a Chase Hyatt card, well, you're very much locked into that ecosystem. But at the same time, if you know that you like Hyatt, you wanna stay at Hyatt, so you want Hyatt points, no problem at all getting that specific card. And of course, the card has an annual fee of $95. And the third card I wanna leave you with is gonna be the Chase Inc. Preferred. So this is another business card from Chase. It comes with a 100,000 point sign-up bonus. However, the spend is kind of high at $8,000, but still, it used to be 15,000, so I guess it's a little bit lower than that. This is purely a points play, in the sense that you can pull down 100,000 points for spending $8,000 with Chase. This card also offers transfer partners, so if you did not have a Sapphire preferred or Sapphire Reserve, you can take points that you earned from your Ink Cash or Ink Unlimited, which is no annual fee business cards, transfers the Ink Preferred, and transfer them out again to those transfer partners. Tier 4, or the premium category with Chase. Here, annual fees, they're going up. So the credit score that we're typically seeing is around 740 or higher, which is going to be in the excellent category. The objective at this tier is very similar to Tier 3. You're optimizing for your category spend, and then you're redeeming for the ideal flight or hotel partner so that you can travel the way that you want to travel. The other objective here is really starting to think about, actually, do I want to travel? Because a lot of these cards here are going to be travel-centric cards. They're gonna give you the bells and whistles of things like airport lounge access. They're gonna give you things like travel protections, all the things that are geared towards someone who enjoys traveling. So if you're not someone who's really into travel and you're really into team cashback, 
at this level, it actually might not make a whole ton of sense for you. And there's not a whole ton to master here other than, again, the transfer partners. In fact, this is actually where I am currently at, and I don't know if I'm going to be progressing to tier five. We're going to discuss tier five, but this is where I've been at for, I don't know, at this point, six, seven years. It's really get the sign-up bonuses, get the travel-centric cards, redeem, redeem, use, use. So two cards I would recommend at this level. The first one is gonna be the Chase Sapphire Reserve. This card has an annual fee of $550. However, there are some credits to offset it, making it effectively a $350 a year card, but that's still a pretty hefty fee to be paying for a credit card. Now, the card does reward you with giving you things like access to Priority Pass, which is airport lounges. In addition, the card gives you a credit for global entry, which is expedited entry back into the US plus TSA pre-check. What I love about my Sapphire Reserve is the fact that I get a 50% bonus if I redeem my Chase Ultimate Reward points through the Chase Ultimate Reward Travel Portal just by way of having a Sapphire Reserve. So the 2 million or so Chase points I have could be worth $30,000 in travel just by way of having a Sapphire Reserve. Another card that's really cool at this level is the Chase Ritz-Carlton card. Now you can't outright apply for the card, you have to apply for a Marriott card and then one year later do a product change to the Ritz card, but the Ritz card is actually phenomenal. For one, it only has a $450 annual fee. I say only because its brother or sister card on the Amex side has now a $650 annual fee. The Ritz-Carlton card also gives you free authorized users and those authorized users get priority pass. And the priority pass that comes from both the Ritz-Carlton card and the Chase Sapphire Reserve card still gives you restaurant dining credits, which I would argue sometimes, especially flying in the United States, the restaurant dining credit is better than just a priority pass lounge because sometimes those lounges are just offering things like crackers and cheese, which honestly, meh. As I'm sure you can see now, at tier four, it's pretty much maxed out. You have all the bells and whistles. You've got the transfer partners, you've got the elevated luxury travel perks. So what exactly is that tier five? Well, that's why you've probably stuck around this point because that tier five is the $10 million Chase credit card. Tier five is what I would call the ultra premium category. Although it's funny because the annual fee actually doesn't change all that much. The credit score, still the same, 740 plus. The objective, you're here to flex. You got money, you're here to show people you have money. That's the really only objective at this level. Because the card in and of itself that we'll talk about in just a second isn't all that different than what we've already seen. But as far as requirements for getting it, that's what's unique. So the card at this level is the JP Morgan Reserve Credit Card. To be able to apply for the card, you need to have $10 million invested with JP Morgan. After you have that, they say, okay, great, now you have 10 million with us. Here, we'll let you apply for this card, which is crazy to even think about, that that's what it takes to unlock this card. You're probably thinking, well, then that card must be magical. It must be amazing. It must have some crazy benefits. No, not at all. It's actually the exact same thing as the regular Chase Sapphire Reserve. The only difference is you get United Club Pass to access. That's it. You can go to United Lounges, but otherwise it's the exact same. Annual fee, same. If there's a sign-up bonus, it should be the same. Earnings should be the same. Benefits, largely all the same. The only difference is someone with a Chase Sapphire Reserve doesn't have to have $10 million to apply for the card. Whereas if you want the JP Morgan Reserve, you need $10 million to apply. Back in the day, there used to be a way in which you can get a business relationship manager to put an application through for you, but they've long since closed that loophole. So I guess if you want a JP Morgan Reserve card, you'll just have to have 10 million buckaroos sitting around dumped in with JP Morgan. And that's it folks. This is how you climb the Chase credit card ladder, all the way from tier one at the base level with Chase cards to tier five at the ultra premium level with Chase cards. If you have any comments, questions, you know where to drop them. And as always, if you'd like to support my channel, you can feel free to check out any of my offers and sponsor links down below as well. And I will catch you all on the next video. Peace.